Wheel bearings have a tough job, mainly because they have to handle both high and low pressure conditions. When the bearing heats up because of friction or braking, it creates pressure inside the hub, and as the bearing cools down, it creates a vacuum or suction effect. Managing this pressure keeps the grease inside under high pressure and prevents dirt and grime from getting in when there's low pressure. That's where a wheel bearing seal comes in. Seals can keep a bearing sealed, but if there's a leak, that's a sign the seal has failed. In this video, let's talk about how to service and install a seal after one has been damaged. The first thing you should know about seal installation is a seal should always be installed so that the sealing lip is facing the fluid. The lip is made so that the pressure applied to it from the wet side of the seal will increase the pressure the lip applies to the shaft. If the seal is installed backward, pressure acting on the wrong side of the lip will cause it to lift from the shaft, which will cause leakage. Lots of seals make this process obvious because the side that faces the fluid of the shell is open, but others are not as obvious. Some seal shells are symmetrical, so pay close attention to the correct direction of the lip. These seals may have an arrow on them to show the rotation. Others, like directional seals, may have small diagonal ridges near the lip. The ridges are basically screw threads that help divert fluid away from the lip as the shaft turns. In some cases, seals are made with a sine wave in the lip, resonating a pattern as the shaft turns, which helps squeeze the lip, push pump oil away, and reduce leakage. After removing the seal, inspect the hub and spindle surfaces where the seal lip contacts. If you find minor scratches or corrosion, you can often smooth these out with an emery cloth. Don't use anything coarser, though. If an old seal has worn a groove into the surface, Test it with your fingernail. If you can feel the groove after polishing, it's too deep and unacceptable. Replacing the hub or spindle could be very expensive, considering both parts and labor costs. Check the seal to see if it's the cause of the failure. If the seal is hard and or worn, it's a victim of age. However, if the lip of the seal is soft and swollen, it may be a victim of non-compatible lubricants. If this is the case and the seal is relatively new, it may have been incorrectly installed. Installation failures include torn lips, dents from improper installation tools, misalignment, and a missing garter spring, which can dislodge from its groove. Also, don't forget to check for signs of heat damage. Then, make sure you have the correct seal and check the fit on the shaft and in the housing. Before installing the seal, lubricate the lip. If you skip this step and the seal is installed dry, the lip will overheat as soon as the shaft starts turning. Lastly, use a seal installer to tap the new seal into place. What if the seal has to be installed over a rough part of the shaft to get where it belongs? If this is the case, wrap masking tape around the rough areas to prevent seal damage. Also, start the seal in the bore squarely and drive it in squarely. Generally, the seal should be tapped in until it's flush. It's a good idea to check the depth before the old seal is removed. For more tire and service videos, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Christian Hinton, coming to you from the Tire Review Continental Tire Garage Studio at Babcock's Media. See you next time.